This is the Citroen EC3 within six months of the launch of the petrol powertrain in the C3 hatchback. Citroen India has launched the EC3 with the electric powertrain. We are at the Wapco proving grounds on the outskirts of Chennai to sample this car out, tell you all about the electric C3. But before we go forward, do like this video, subscribe to the Evo India channel, and hit the bell icon to stay notified. Now, let's find out how Citroen has done with its first crack on an EV in India. Now, until a few years ago, you just had a couple of cars in the electric vehicle segment and that's why you called the entire uh, EV space a segment. Now you get an electric car in each segment, which is, now look at the Tiago EV, that's a small hatch. Then you get the Tigor EV, a small sedan. You get a Nexon EV Max Prime. You get the XUV 400. You, you move up the ladder and then you get the MG ZS EV. You get that BYD Atto 3 and several other cars are coming as you move up the segments. So yes, this is an interesting space that you're going to be seeing a lot of new vehicles coming in. And the EC3 tries to find its niche now in this space. And Citroen is trying to get multiple electric vehicles over the next couple of years, starting with this car. This is the first EV from Citroen and then you get another one within a few months of this, which is a completely new platform for an electric vehicle, for a small electric vehicle that will be built in India and will be exported to several countries. It is a vastly growing space and Citroen is trying to quickly react and position its cars in several segments going forward. We will have two EVs from Citroen this year. Next year, there's another EV coming in. So yeah, I mean, it's going to be a fast growing space and even for a new car maker in India, there are, there are going to be more electric vehicle options very soon. Then you find petrols, I mean, that's, that's how the game has changed in the electric vehicle space in India and globally. So while development on the EC3 started about four and a half, almost four and a half years ago, uh, the powertrain, this bit is a full unit that Citroen is buying from BYD. BYD, yes, that same car maker that very few of us knew anything about till about a year ago, but it's a massive player in the electric car space. And they are now supplying large scale components in the EV space to a lot of manufacturers, including Toyota and the rumors of Tesla. And now, now we know that the EC3 also uses the e-powertrain from BYD. So, yeah, a lot of manufacturers around the world are realizing how reliable a Chinese car maker is, which is, I mean, speaks volumes of that particular company. You can't say that about every company that comes from China, but BYD specifically in the EV space, yeah, the e-powertrain in this car is from BYD, so the motor, the motor controller, the vehicle control unit, um, all the major, the, uh, the DC charging capability. So this car in this space is the only car that offers you DC fast charging all the time. Until now, there's no car except for the BYDs that claim that you could charge the car uh, at a DC charger all the time. So it shows off the reliability of the powertrain. A few things people might have issues about when you look at a spec sheet is that this is an air-cooled battery. It's not a liquid-cooled battery. So, um, I mean, cooling in a country like India might be a challenge, but Sitan says that they have they have uh, tested this vehicle for almost half a million kilometers and they've faced no issues with it. So, yeah, the, it's a naturally cooled. It's not even a forced air-cooled um, uh, battery so how is this going to perform uh, in real world conditions when the cars are in the hands of owners and not uh, some part of uh, testing for a manufacturer we will have to wait and see about it this of course is only a preview of the car this is not a full review of the car because we are driving it on a small test track on the outskirts of Chennai um, but it gives you a fair bit of idea about what this car is 
Um, the C3 is a very soft car. It uh, handles, it rolls a, a lot in the corners. But this car now, of course, you've got the battery in the floor, so all the weight is low down. The ground clearance is slightly lower than the regular C3. The C3 is 180 mm, this is 170. So it sits a lot slightly lower, but that doesn't mean that it will have bad ground clearance. 170 is excellent clearance. Uh, you will find out that the EC3 handles corners much better. It takes corners much better because of the center of gravity being so low. So compared to the C3, which I recently drove about say a month ago, I find the EC3 a better handler. Another thing it makes only 56 brake horsepower and 143 newton meters of torque, which isn't much by any standards. Probably the the least powerful EV you can buy in India starting next month. It's um, could be a 15 20 horsepower less than the Tiago EV. So yeah, 56 uh, you might think is a very low number, but uh, on this track, because you get torque at zero RPM practically. The car is nimble, it's quick on its feet and it can hold speeds like what I'm doing about 90 very comfortably. It can. It has a top speed of 107, 0 to 60 comes in 6.8 seconds which is not a very slow car uh, for the segment that it is. So yeah, it's a, it's a sprightly performer, uh, goes fairly easy, accelerating uh, is quick. Uh, you will not probably need more than 107 kilometers per hour of top speed ever in the car because you're most likely going to be driving it in the city. If you are doing highway runs, most of our highways have speed limits of 100, right? So you're not crossing that. And it doesn't feel like the motor is under stress, but because it's a only 56 horsepower motor, you will find that the battery might take a lot of the load of uh, acceleration and we'll have to see how it does in terms of range when it's in the real world. Does it give close to the claimed range that Citroen claims, which is 320 kilometers on a full charge? So what they're saying is that in the real world, you can expect close to 240, 250 uh, on a full charge. We'll have to see whether that is the case. We'll have to see whether the EC3 gives you around 220 to 40 kilometers on a full charge. If that's the case, it could be used on highways. DC chargers are coming up all across the country. You get uh, Citroen itself, uh, they've tied up with uh, Geo and BP to set up chargers, to set up uh, fast chargers at their own dealerships as well. Citroen themselves will have their own DC fast chargers at their dealerships that every brand can uh, use it. It's going to be brand agnostic. So uh, yeah, a 36 kilowatt charger, wherever the manufacturer has its dealerships, its network, in addition to the GOBP network that is coming up across the country. So it's uh, charging, I think, for electric vehicles is going to be a non-issue within a couple of years probably by the end of 2023, beginning of 2024, charging will be a non-issue with electric vehicles. Almost every car will now be a, uh, will now take DC fast charging. When you're out on the highway, every major expressway is coming up with chargers. We, we see that happening very quickly because a lot of the brands themselves are investing and facilitating setting up of chargers across the country. It's got a 29.2 kilowatt battery. Uh, these are LFP prismatic cells, not the cylindrical cells. Uh, and uh, of course, again, the batteries are sourced from China. Uh, but uh, and these are air-cooled batteries. So uh, we'll have to see how well these batteries do in our uh, road conditions. In the real world, does it, does it feel like you might have an issue with the heating or not. We'll have to find that out in the real world when we drive the car. Will it affect range of the car in the real world? We will have to find that out as well. So how close to 
the manufacturer prescribed uh, range does the EC3 give? We'll have to find that out. Citroen has taken a slightly different approach compared to Tata Motors. The car is as as similar to the regular petrol counterpart as possible. There are no changes whatsoever except for a bit of the drive selector here. You get an eco mode that probably changes the regeneration on the car and that's about it. You get a charge indicator here, you get a range indicator there and that's it. The display is the same, the seats are the same, the materials are the same, the colors, the options are the same, um, the dual tone paint on this car just that it, it's a reverse of what you get in a petrol car so if you get a like a white car with an orange roof in the electric you get the orange car with a white roof and all those other options but you know, it's practically as simple as close to the petrol car as possible and what that means is that Citroen is not spending extra to to make the electric car stand very different from the petrol car because they were built on the same platform they want to keep it as close to each other as possible so it is providing that level of value that Citroen wants to provide with its cars at a good price with the C3 the pricing was really good with the EC3 that is now the hope that Citroen is pricing the EC3 very close to what a Tiago EV was priced the difference will be that this has a larger battery, about 5 kilowatt more than the uh, Tiago EV. So how close to it can Citroen price this car? Because, uh, you know, owners of the EC3 will realize that there is not that much extra value or something special added to this car compared to a petrol, the petrol car. And also, few things like it's got an air-cooled battery that's not liquid cool so and uh, things are as simple as possible in fact if you notice there's a charging cap on the front on the front fender uh, the fuel filler cap on the rear is still there from the petrol car they've not removed that off and given us a different panel for it so they've tried to keep costs as minimal as possible in the development of the EC3 When you think of small EVs, they've got to make a logical case for themselves as proper city runabouts. Good ride quality, comfortable interiors, low running costs, that kind of thing. With the EC3, if it's priced around the 10 and a half, 11 lakh mark, that makes an interesting case for this car. The good thing is that this can take DC charging all the time, so you can go long distances in this car and not waste a lot of time charging. How it is though in the real world, that we will find out. This is only a preview how it rides on our road conditions, how the battery performs, how it takes harsh weather conditions. That's what we'll find out in due course. But until then, this is a preview of the EC3.